are, man. And there's a uh, Dylan. A lot has changed since the last time you've been on the show. So uh, no doubt, this <laughs> yeah. is a much different experience. <laughs> and thanks for being in the studio with us. Yeah, That's what's up. it worked out really well. I think like last weekend or or sooner than that, we were talking about like it'd be cool to do an in person one, and I was like, well. I'm thinking about coming into town this weekend, so it worked out. Yeah, dude. Awesome. Yeah, I don't even know how you're standing with the uh, – you, you just did the Up All Night Central Cinema screening. Yes, it was awesome, and I'd love to dig into that some. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I got into town on Saturday at 3. The movie started around 4 and ended at, like, 6 in the morning. Jeez. So I think I <laughs> fell asleep around 7.30 a.m., yeah. got up. I went to the Rossini thing, like the food truck yeah. festivals downtown. Mm-hmm. That was really cool. And, uh, yeah, I got some decent sleep last night, too, so I'm feeling all right. All right. Right on. Um, Well, welcome Dylan Young on the Strange Ones podcast. Uh, John is not here with us today. He uh, wishes his best and uh, says hi to you and everything, of course. Hello, Um, John. But, but yeah, so I I, kind of wanted to, um, now that we've already introduced the Up All Night thing, I just wanted to ask about it because I think it's so fascinating. I've always seen screenings like that where it's like a movie marathon for, like, almost you know a whole night's worth or you know 12 hours however it is this one was like 13 and a half 14 dude like is it easy to feel like you're about to fall asleep during that like because i feel like i would just knock out pretty so easily. both times i stayed up all night mm-hmm. i did it last year as well um there was like a movie each time that I would nod in and out of, mm-hmm. but my goal yesterday was like, I didn't have caffeine for like two days straight. And then I waited until like 11 PM and I chugged an energy drink and oh, it got geez. me through a lot of the night. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh, what kind of movies were playing? So this year they like each year they pick one film to license and promote and then it's like six mystery screenings afterwards mm. so this year it was troll 2 which oh, shit. a classic the I've best worst troll movie ever troll. made you, yeah, you played that one clip oh yeah i've never so played troll or, uh, shout out to troll as well though <laughs> troll 1 also a great movie completely unrelated troll 2 has nothing to do with troll um, <laughs> a lot less nail bogs yeah, yeah. absolutely <laughs> so it's funny that normally they open with that and then they do a bunch of mystery screenings and they're all just kind of like wacky genre cinema stuff this year they faked everybody out. They got them all into the theater, and then they did not start with Troll Two. Oh, they wow. started with the Peanut Butter Solution. <laughs> if anyone's ever seen the Peanut I Butter Solution, it is a film about uh, a little boy who is scared that he's he gets so scared that all of his hair falls out, and then he has these. Uh, visions of these ghosts and they tell him this crazy concoction of like he's got to have a rotten egg and five dead flies and all this stuff and he mixes it all up and he puts a spoonful of peanut butter and he paints this on his head and his hair will grow back but then there's just like this whole like child workforce slavery trafficking line going on and it's like <laughs> it's like it's this like Canadian tax shelter film that was like made to be a kids movie but like it's not a kids movie like I wouldn't show it to a kid <laughs> you know that sounds yeah pretty odd uh, it's a wild yeah. film yeah severin films put it out on their severin kids line so oh there's like a, a blu-ray that can be bought wow what year did this come out that is a great question if i had to guess i would say this was like a late 80s effort okay i was gonna say because a lot of kids movies in the 80s are just meant to terrify children yes mm-hmm. very like, wacky return to oz like even the original Willy Wonk. Oh, yep. that's a huge oh, man. Right for there. sure. Yeah. Huge influence. I've always been meaning to rewatch uh, Re- Return to Oz. I I, Dude, I feel like I saw that when film. I was young, and it's, I just it was like it is trauma- it's definitely <laughs> it's like, a strange <laughs> film. It's a strange <laughs> film to the maximum, and it's completely yeah. I love the Wizard of Oz <laughs> so much. Like I, that was like one of my childhood movies. I still like go to as a comfort movie. Oh, and yeah. then like I remember being young enough but old enough to be like. Oh, there's a return to Oz? Like, that's cool. And then... What better like, way to make a sequel to a very comforting movie than making it extremely uncomfortable? Yeah. Over 50 years later. <laughs> it's like, just what such the a, hell? Yeah. yeah. It's so different, dude. Yeah. Yeah, it's a crazy one. Very uh, surreal. Yeah. But yeah no, I'm also curious what your favorite... Uh, do you have a, dec- a favorite decade of film? Like, uh, 1970s. Dude, right on. Nice. Yeah, for sure. Right there um, there's something the about, like the independent people were able to start making good movies in the 70s More because they didn't need all of the money 
to make the movies anymore that the studios needed and they were able to still like flex their creativity and everything so it's like i feel like in the 1970s you start getting these low budget features that can be marketed as high budget features literally dude that's exactly right man i think really that's like probably the first like golden prime time of cinema in modern times we've had because like the 60s was building up in a lot of ways mm-hmm. a lot of like european stuff was building up. i think america really caught on in the 70s yes. the best way we really kind of fully took it on all that influence totally and just made totally it just the american new wave the best yeah one of the best genres of film mm-hmm. there is that was the seventies was the golden era and like that. chainsaw kind of in the late sixties kind of kicked all that off in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. That was a huge influence into yeah. just grittier territory. Just and then, yeah, there was a lot of sixties stuff that was sort of reminiscent like Sergio Leone, like spaghetti western type. Yes, stuff, which, I know that's your first. No one's a oh, spaghetti western. So. Huge spaghetti western yeah, fan. I, I know you guys have a roots in there. <laughs> that's super cool, man. Do you have a favorite spaghetti western? Oh man, I know it's the obvious one, but Good, the Bad, the Ugly is seriously just the most rewatchable film of, of all time. Okay, I mean, once upon a time in the West is up there too, as well as the Great. Another Silence. one. I, um, I just got the Great Gucci. Silence. Oh, I haven't one. watched it yet. I watched uh, the Big Gun Down. I've never seen that one. Li- love that. Highly recommended. <laughs> <laughs> Day of Anger is always my big one that I suggest people. Day of Anger is this cool like coming of age western tale Dude. and highly recommended. It was probably the biggest influence on the kids revenge. Cool, man. So like that and Kill Bill right were like on. hugely oh, influential too. on that. That's awesome. Yeah, and Tarantino perfectly kind of like continues a lot of those like 60 Italian western yes. type of type of influence. Yeah, yeah, totally. Influence right totally. There. Awesome, man. This is what I was excited about. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get to a lot of the course You two just <laughs> nerd out over out. movies. Yeah. Yeah, you, you'll get me excited for what you're talking about. It'll me and Lucas again. walks out of the room. You two are just still <laughs> going. <laughs> Longest podcast we've ever had. Right. I didn't have oh, to do man. anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, just um, it's hard not to. <laughs> yeah, all those things you just uh, described, though, um, I can see it in your work, though, man. I mean, like, I, I, I sent the links to these guys uh, before. Um, I know they watched some of your films. You were at the Strange Films Extravaganza. So yeah. Yeah. Some people uh, in the area, I mean, obviously you work here in a lot, but um, a lot of my circle know who you are through that. But yeah, I mean, like, what, uh, what, any questions about the kids' revenge or anything, Blake? Because I know you, you yeah, were pretty yeah. fascinated really about cool. a lot of the stuff. I, I, I personally, I know yeah. last time me and you talked, Dylan, uh, I was just obsessed with like your lighting, the cinematography now. It's like everything, your style is just like so unique and just on point and Thank sharp. You. Man. That's I, a lot I'm of really, I, I really love it. what you're doing. Man. I, I, Thank I think you. that's really what I built up most. I think most of my questions really were just kind of like what were your influences were going into that. And it does sound like that spaghetti western primarily. But yeah, was, so... yeah, well framed, well directed, <sighs> atmospheric. It, Thank you. Yeah, it had, it had an aftertaste about it. Um, so you're saying, like, what were some of the other influences yeah. for The Kid's Revenge? Yeah, were there other influences hmm. outside of the Spaghetti Western? Like, yeah, for sure. Let me think. So it's, like, a lot of, like, general revenge movies and, like, I think, uh, hmm, let me think for a second. I saw a bit of Sweeney Todd influence with the neck cut. The neck, knife cut. Uh, That's yeah. actually uh, my favorite shot of the whole thing. I felt like the way that we, like, lit it, did the special effects, hit it from a specific angle, it just felt real to me. And that really actor's does. great, too. He really goes for it, mm-hmm. but... Yeah, well, your like, location and set design too. It's just, I mean, it's uh, it's unbelievable, dude. Like, yeah, I, mean, that's I remember the, watching it. I was like, holy hell! I believe the three main marks of like an amazing <laughs> film is really it comes down to the boils down to the sound, um, it comes the characters and the uh, and the and the basically the world building. And I really feel like you nailed all three of those elements right off the bat. I saw Thank all four you. of your films. I was like, yeah, there is an element of those three. It was, uh, it always always in rotation. And I, yeah, I, yeah, I couldn't have lucked out more on that location. So it's like that location we filmed everything at the same spot. And it was just this old west town. So basically, I was like, I just need to find like an old like wild west like tourist spot and like call around and see what I can do. And I called a bunch of them, and like some of them had like closed down. The one that I was intending to that I'd been to before was closed down. And then uh, one of them was like, Oh yeah, that would be great. Can I be in the movie too? <laughs> and then he was like, Well, wait. It's only this week? You have to hurry? Oh, well, we're bringing out all of our Halloween decorations this week, and there's no way you could, like, shoot around it, basically. So, like, this was, like, almost my last straw, and I called this place, and they're like, yeah. And I, like, went there and checked it all out, and I was like, can I just, like rent some like cabin areas for us and then we can just film here and they were like yeah so it was like right really on, cheap too cool. yeah wow, it nice. worked out really so well because i'm looking to do that too with my, with my project. yes That's, like, good to know. it was awesome and then like the little kid version of the kid was the grandson of the owner nice. of the place and then she was like do y'all need horses and i was like yeah i need horses so like she got those extras with horses yeah, out for yeah, me yeah. and like oh. it was a really cool experience and like everybody was really into it and like it just felt like Everybody was like, "Ooh, I get to work on a western. Yeah, whatever you need. Like, what can I do to help?" And it was really fun. That's always the exciting part about like what we do, and like when you start 
contacting locals or mm -hmm. businesses and they're, they're not used to that kind of experience so they're like all for it they're actually they're adding extra things yep. and resources or whatever else they can do because it's exciting and they, you know they're a part of something that's everlasting that's cool and the more remote areas i go to the more likely i am to find people like that mm -hmm. but like a lot of the time i'll be in nashville like trying to book an airbnb and they'll be like no you can't film here yeah. like give us hundreds of extra dollars right. and i'm like as if I have that, you yeah, know, right? <laughs> that, yeah, that's the problem. And more congested areas are, or whatever. It's you know, bi bigger businesses are, or anything like yep. that. It's you have to find your people in it, man. Mm -hmm. Oh, a lot of people hear tough. movie and they think money, mm -hmm. you know, and yep. it's like that's nah, not always the case. Ah, <laughs> no, no, <it's>, <laughs> what if I told you I'm man. broke? Right. <laughs> it's passion, man, it's like anything. my <laughs> most recent thing, The Fool. I think it was a hundred dollars. You yeah. know, it was like my gas to get there, a bottle of whiskey, and food for crew. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's like that was it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that uh, that full the full was short and sweet, man. Thank you. Pretty yeah. Pretty uh, scary in a dramatic lens too. But yeah, it's a uh, see. It's like my first kind of non-traditional horror intense. film. Yeah, but like it's still it scares me. Yeah, you know? no, it's odd. <laughs> yeah, that's like, the way I felt. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure like... how much you want to talk about now because I'm not sure if it's released or not or going to be released soon. So but... I'll um, I'll have it released by the time this airs. Yeah, I'll go ahead and just drop Tuesday? it tonight. Yeah, okay. Yeah, cool. I'll drop it tonight right. when I get home. Yeah, right on. Cool. So we can put a link there. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I, it's just it's just like that subtle, slow, drawn out approach, and I'm like, I'm like, what's gonna be there? What's gonna be there? Yeah. And so it was for a one minute film showcase, and the theme was fool. Okay. So I was, I saw that they like announced this, and that night I had this idea. And it kind of like kept me up. And okay. I was like, all right, I have That's to make this. One. So the next morning I wrote it. I sent it to the actor. He was town. And it took me like a week to find the location. And it all worked out really well. But it was funny because it's like, you know, you all have seen it. Most of the film is a one -er. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And I'm within a time constraint. Mm -hmm. And he's given this long monologue. Oh, uh, yeah. And he got drunk for me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like right off the bat, he's in time. Mm -hmm. But the more he drinks the slower it gets, mm -hmm. but it feels more authentic. So then it was just like about speeding it up. But it's funny. It's like, I'm standing at my monitor with like a stopwatch, basically <laughs> like timing him on my phone, like and back to one. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah. So it, it took a while, but it was really How rewarding. How many takes did you guys do with that? So on my sound files, there was, okay. We had 17 recordings, but we went back to one sometimes. Mm -hmm. So it's like, probably did like 20 something takes wow. of that if not but it's like overall you know we call time was 5 p.m and we left at like 10 you know so it, yeah. it was I mean, it went well it. we basically just took forever to light it because we could yeah, you know yeah, what i mean yeah. it's like we only need two shots let's make sure it looks really oh, good yeah. definitely yeah yeah i've always wanted to do a one minute film challenge i just it it's fun. always trying to figure out what to do in that minute you know Dude. but yeah honestly like seeing what you did though inspired me to be like oh man that's such a simple yeah i just like concept. how can i make it yeah. simple but also meaningful right right and then the night of the event it already did like premiere and played at the event and everything they announced the theme for the next month and it's hero and it's like i had had this thing in my head for a couple of months and i was like all right well i'm gonna write it so i wrote it the next day but I'm just really busy this month, and I don't think I'm going to make it now. Yeah. But eventually I want to make it. And it's like a, it's about like emergency services call center worker taking like a 911 call. And it's something that I've been wanting to make for a while. So be on the lookout because I'll right. probably that's make it cool, soon. Man. Dude, that's <laughs> cool. That's cool, man. I like yeah. kind of taking the simplicity of premises and just, just, just really executing in your own original way. Because, yeah, I think that's incredibly challenging to make it that short. It really it's makes tough. it that interesting. It I, that's seriously difficult. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, like as short as I could ever do is like 15 minutes. Like I could not do that short. Like that's, it's that's, tough that's really to condense. Hard. And it's like, yeah. you know, when I'm going into this, I'm thinking like of ideas that are only a minute. You know yeah. what I mean? Because it's like if my story is so much bigger, it's hard for me to narrow it down. Like I just did this grant project recently and I had to write a 15 page max screenplay. And I typed up like 37 pages and I was like, how do I cut this <laughs> yeah, down? Yeah. You know, well, it was that, tough. And that's what's tough because I feel like you have to have like a lot of ideas generating while you're on it. And I'm sure you want to do more yes. and more like while you're there. Oh it's yeah, like, and as I'm writing you this. Whole, this whole setup there. That's, like, and you got, that's a lot to set up. So, like, you, absolutely. You got it, so it's, like, and it's like as I was writing this script, I was like, man, I've got more ideas for what happens before and after mm -hmm. what I'm going to show too. So it's like, I think I'm just going to adapt that into a feature soon and just have a script ready right for on, it. Right on, man. That's so cool, man. You know, I'm like seriously, 
fun. Excited, like, oh, yeah, just to see a feature. Because that's what I'm kind of building up to a lot of my stuff. But I'm, I can see what you do, man. Yeah, it's the feature thing is tough. So I shot a feature in like 2021, mm. and I edited it, and then I realized there were some like technical issues, and I was like, I kind of have to like re-edit this from the ground up again, which is kind of a confusing thing. But it's like now I've got it to where it's like ready to cut again, and I'm like. I just the stuff I make now is a lot better mm -hmm. and it's tough because it's like I don't feel as motivated to work on it mm -hmm. and also it's like this isn't my first feature it's like that says a lot about you almost you know what I mean so I'm like I think it's gonna be cut into a long form short film and put out but I've been cooking up some a potential feature soon I, mean, I can't wait that's awesome I'm excited awesome. That's, that's interesting when you say that though because like I I was mentioning the Blake earlier, um, I've been thinking about a lot of my short films that I kind of started off doing and you know, they're fun to me and everything, but I look back at it and I'm like, my stuff is totally different now. I feel like my, like, especially my writing and my, I feel like how I would approach directing it. Yeah. And I was like toying with the idea of either remaking one of those old short films or doing like a companion piece, a sequel to it, yeah. but like, you know, just kind of taking that lore and going, but where you can see the direct well, comparison personal roots yeah. in your earlier work, you know? And I, I kind of feel like, like when you make your feature, you'll probably look at these that you made here and that'll be like a blueprint, like kind of like hundred percent. It's like, and you'll maybe even see a revival of that. Like, well, there's a lot of my personality in living in there that can be enhanced now that you've got all these other, other stuff under your belt now too. For so, sure. Like, you just have something completely new. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Lucas, have you ever been a part of like a, a, Film challenge, like a timed shoot or anything like that. Seven day shootout. The seven day shootout. Yep. All right, right. Is on. that a local thing? Uh, it was okay. until the shut down the uh thing because of drama. Ah. Oh, that was the. Uh, yeah, the, I got you. What a bummer. <laughs> that's what. That's when we did love Corey. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I yeah, that. I've done some like 48s, and I just recently did a 54 for the first time. But yeah. like, I only work crew on those. I'm not, yeah, <laughs> I'm not trying to make one of yeah. those. I think that's how I would want to approach it, man. Well, see, it's funny. I was like, I'll, I'll never do a 48. I'll never do anything like this. Mm -hmm. And then I saw the grind out, and mm -hmm. I was like, two weeks, and it's just a movie trailer. I was like, yeah, you know, yeah, you're so really good at that. I too, love man. those I, things. They're man, so much fun. I can't. Eat, I don't know. I've always wanted to try the Grindhouse trailer, but like, I don't know if I can get to that style. Like, it's like I just need help on because I'm such a well style you know, doesn't matter too much. You know, it's like, uh, did you see similar suspects of mine? Yeah, the, yeah. that's my mm -hmm. most recent mm -hmm. one. It's like it doesn't feel like a Grindhouse film. It I almost did, feels like yeah. an A twenty four movie. I did really? notice yeah, that. You know, I just wanted killing. to feel very mysterious. I did yeah, notice you know? that. No, yeah, that was very mysterious. And, I, and like, I, I like how you kind of brought up like it doesn't really over stylize. If anything, I felt like a lot of substance in there. And you know, I really believe in that balance of like. The appropriate amount of time, but overall, I think substance is really the key element to be as a director. It's like you want to have just some meat behind what you're doing. You know, For you sure. It original. And as I did The Kid's Revenge, it's very obvious. It's like, okay, I know what this movie is. Mm -hmm. And this year, I was like, I want to challenge myself to try to like make a trailer that has more intrigue and more mystery to it where people are like, I don't know what this is, but it makes me want to watch it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good that's a good approach to have. Yeah, I mean, that's it right there. Yeah, really, just that. Because um, I think that's really, you know, because they always say, like, you want to make what you always wanted to see while you were growing up. And I think that was always it, man. Like, going to the movies, I just wanted to see something that would just, just completely rock my socks off, but something new. And just, like, oh, yeah. you will not see this anywhere else. Oh, yeah. And that's just, that's always been resonating. Making, like, a thriller, just really, like, a yeah, gripping, like, you wouldn't see this anywhere else kind of story. <laughs> very subtle, too. Yes, it's always, like, a very fun thing when you feel like you've pulled that off. It's really nice. Yes, it could take a while to get to that point, but yeah, when you get Absolutely. there, it's, it's really, it's really the best. Right, it makes it all worth it. Actually, right, yeah, I'll be putting uh, similar suspects out soon too. Awesome. Nice, I can't wait to see it. Nice. So, Dylan, you're pretty, uh, you're pretty active. I mean, you're always working on something. You're, you're traveling a lot, man. You're uh, coming to Knoxville quite a bit. Nashville, you work out there a lot. Yes, sir. You're out in Kentucky. Um, you know, how does it? How is it just like, I mean, cause like, I feel like for me, it's, I don't know. I'm kind of on that. I'm looking for more projects to be a part of because my projects take a while for me to get kind of get up and rolling. I'm trying to get sure. a little quicker on some things, but okay. like, I feel like you're always busy and moving around, man. Like, uh, you're always jumping from project to project. I mean, I try to, be. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's like, I'll take a lot of work that's given to me, whether mm -hmm. it's acting or crew or whatever, and, you know, a lot of it's just, like, working on my friend's stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I just try to keep myself busy with personal projects. Um, it's like I just feel like I have to, like, create stuff, yeah. you know? So it's like there's always, like, 
a few scripts I'm working on and like a few things that I'm pre-producing and I've always got like three edits that I wish were done. You know, mm -hmm. it's like I just try to keep a lot of irons in the fire, but that way it's nice too because I can wake up each day and be like, I don't feel like writing, but I've got some editing I could do. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Or like, uh, I don't really feel like doing any kind of like straightforward work. I'm going to make calls and figure out, you know, what's going on with the pre-production for this feature I'm supposed yeah, to AD or whatever. Or yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's it's nice because I don't feel like I have to do things all yeah. the time. I, was, I guess that I guess I was kind of leaning like on the motivation side of things sometimes. Is it do you ever kind of get like overwhelmed by all the stuff that you kind of got going on? Like oh yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> and like you know, uh, some people close to me feel like I take on too many projects all the mm -hmm. time, and they're not wrong. Uh, <laughs> but I think like. Otherwise, I'd feel like I was wasting my time. And mm. it's not true. You know what I mean? I just feel like I have this, like, capitalistic mindset of, like, go, go, go. Yeah. Like, I have to achieve my dreams, and I have mm. to work hard every day for it. And while that's true, it's like, you know, maybe I don't need to make multiple short films every year. You know, maybe I should focus more on, like, promoting or, you know, it's it's always a mystery. Yeah, because you know? that's been a conversation we've had on this show uh, recently. I mean, like, I one of the realizations, I think I even mentioned it to you, uh, where it's just, like, I kind of felt like I took on too much, and mm -hmm. I'm kind of trying to maintain my health, my healthy balance uh, as far as, like, my workflow and things like that. Because I'm, I'm the same way, man. I'm a freak when it comes to, like, just creating and trying to just – get to the dream, get to the dream. Yep. And, you know, sometimes I realize, like, it's like I black out. I'm like, oh, shit, I've got, like, 17 different things on my plate here. And I'm yeah, like, you know, I've recently like... started having to turn things down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I <clears throat> I definitely understand the mindset. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's uh, – being a creator is one of those, like, bittersweet things sometimes. You know? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. On. Yeah. For sure. So what is, like, the rewarding moment that makes it all worth it for you? I think for me, it's just seeing like, I don't know, like putting something out, obviously like any sort, anytime I create something where I feel like really proud of, excited about something yeah. like that, that's like my golden ticket for me. Yep. I'm like, yeah, man, like I did that. That makes yep. me feel so good. Even if it's just a learning experience, like whatever it is, obviously when you put like a film out and then you start seeing the reactions of people, I, I like, that's always super exciting. I always like, I think for me, it, it most, it means a lot now when I get people who are saying like, you know, this project meant like everything to me. Like this was the opportunity I've never been given before. You know, like I had so much fun on this kind of set. That's really like, cool. The, that kind of validation or like that experience yeah. sharing with people. You know, like connecting with people in that kind of oh, aspect. I love that when like, people that makes say me feel good. that like they really appreciated my set mm -hmm. or like it was one of the best sets they've been on. That's always like super yes. rewarding to me. It makes me feel like I'm doing good to my people. Mm -hmm. You know, but for me, like the main thing is like in-person screenings when there's like big audience reactions oh, yeah, yeah. i'm like that's why i do it yeah dude. <laughs> yeah i mean that that's always a really really great feeling um just having a screening when a lot of people engaged with it yeah. and i mean we had thankfully with the gifted screening we had that you know he comes oh, kill, we had that, that awesome. you know so like I, i'm really grateful for those experiences as well because I, I i remember what it was like you know like having those screens where like no one was there or you that's had a screening goes. and no one it's, it's really quiet and awkward because, right. like, you know, they <laughs> just don't get it. Or like, whatever. what am like, I watching? Like, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> you know, but, you know, it, it's a cool place to be. And I think every filmmaker uh, deserves to have that at some For point, sure. you know, with their, their work. My first film festival, when the screening block ended, it was, like, a bunch of shorts from people all over the world. Mm -hmm. It ends, and then there's, like, seven people in there, and it's, like, me, my brother, my grandma, yeah. and, like, four other people, <laughs> yeah. and they're, like, do you want to come talk? And I'm, like, yeah, but it's just funny. It's just, like, I just feel like I'm, like, telling my grandma about, like, the movie-making yeah. process, Dude, you know that, what I mean? It was, like, up in Philly, we had our film Center City play at a film festival, and it was, like, the same kind of deal. Ours was, like, in the middle of, like, a short film block or almost towards the end of it. Big, nice theater uh, space kind of a decent packed area and then by the time our film there was like 10 people whatever yep. it was and we ended up winning best film that's awesome <laughs> and i had to go up on stage you know my dad and <laughs> his wife and like and like three of the four or five people that we, we were with and then like the three other random people i was just like all right thank you you know it's just, you know, just one of those awkward moments yep. like, all right. no i get it but it's like you don't regret any of that oh, stuff. No, you know, no. it's like, it's still, it's meaningful totally. stepping stones to, you know, your path. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, you're going to be back here in a few weeks with Frank and Con. Yeah, looking forward to it. I got a table for the first yeah. time, so that'll be fun. I'll be selling merchandise for my company, Video Nasties, mm -hmm. but also just like promoing my film and talking to people and uh, look forward to trying to like give away some free stuff. Yeah. So if mm -hmm. anybody's trying to come get some free stuff, just talk to me. Free swag. Yeah. All day. Yeah, I, I'm... I'm a big uh, believer on the free swag. I like to give out a bunch of stuff, too. But that's cool, man. I'm glad you have a table. You got featured and everything on there, man. It's yeah, awesome. Yeah, and I just heard back yesterday that my short film will be playing, too. Nice. So oh, I'm yeah. looking forward cool. to that. Uh, sorry for the mess, I yeah. guess, if yeah. you all have seen. Yeah, yeah I didn't mm -hmm. see that one. Yeah, yeah that, that, that was a heavy one. It is a heavy one, yeah. Oh, okay. So I was wondering, you know, it, people feeling different about playing it for a public audience, which I completely understand. So I was worried, you know, maybe it won't get played, but they're going to play it and I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. That's one that was like really personal to me and was something that I wanted to make for years and I went through multiple drafts and I'm really proud of how it turned out. That's cool. That's a good one. I'm not sure if I actually watched the start for the I, maybe I think you did send the link. I just maybe I missed that one because I remember it's watching. It's got a rather intense ending. Yeah, no, so I didn't you see would remember. Yeah, because I watched. <laughs> <about> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, the, I watched the full and similar suspects, <laughs> and then yeah, I must have. I just missed that one. Got to be able to show it. Yeah, because I just believe so much as being able to show just risky anything, rule breaking, man. In that way, nah, man, emotional, emotional. Well, it's, well, well, and it's like it's technically got a happy ending, and it's yeah. definitely supposed to have a positive message. You know, uh, it's just heavy. I uh, was looking to like Gaspar in a way for inspiration on that one because I just wanted something that would like cut deep you yeah. know what I mean yeah well it was a great one man thank you I appreciate yeah, it is this your first convention setting up as far as the table goes yeah it is yeah, yeah. okay that's I'm exciting. looking forward to it it should be fun yeah I feel uh, underprepared but that's okay I'll it's, feel that way until it starts yeah it's always kind of like what do I need on the table? What yep. do I, how's my display going to look? All those kind of things. My display know. is going to be very minimalist, yeah. but I got a spot with electricity and I'm going to bring a TV from home nice. and I'm going to run my grind outs on a loop. That's cool. And so that should yeah. be fun. I think it'll be engaging. Yeah. Well, freaking con's a great place too, because there's just, it's small and intimate and, um, it's enough space where people you, you'll start to see the same people over there and they and a lot of people love the indie especially horror indie filmmakers and totally. actors and everything like that so they t tend to take the time to get to know you and yep. check out your stuff and i've come out here enough times at this point that i feel like i know a handful of the vendors oh, yeah. and like i'm looking forward to seeing some of my pals you know it's like you'll be there and then like Daniel Fursner and his wife will be set up mm. for the Hag Cult stuff. The Knoxville Horror Film Fest guys are going to be there. My friends from Fright Bites are coming down from Louisville cool. for it. You know, it's like, it'll be cool. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Any particular uh, guests there that you're looking forward to maybe meeting or anything? Ooh, that's a good question. I haven't thought it over super well. I know the Texas Chainsaw panel was of interest, mm -hmm. but I did see a Texas Chainsaw panel last year with like a bunch of people at yeah. it. So I'm I'm probably gonna send my buddy to that one yeah. and then have him record it for me. Nice. So nice. I'm looking forward to that. As far as like people, it's like I know you've got Ginger coming. I'll probably yeah. say hello to her, and um, I'm always looking forward to seeing Brian Bremer. Again. Yeah, I mean, he's, such a nice he's guy. the best, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, he's super cool. <clears throat> um, yeah, well, hell yeah, dude. I, yeah, it's coming up fast. I'm I'm looking forward Less to it. Less than three weeks I know, away, yeah, right? Yeah. But, and, then, and then I'll be up in Kentucky. Uh, I can never remember the town name. I think we talked about it. It's like it's not. It's maybe like an hour from you or something. Lexington? Like that. No. Oh, I'm going there. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember the town's name, but no, it's I uh, remember you mentioning yeah, this yeah. Now. It's yeah. Like, I think it's like four hours away from me, okay. or whatnot. But I'm going up there the weekend before Frank and Con to help out on a shoot out there. Okay, so. cool. Yeah, the weekend before Frank and Con, sorry for the mess, is going to be screening in Chicago. For oh yeah, the Chicago Horror Film nice. Festival. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. It's pretty big. There's like three screens that run for three days straight Jeez. so it's like there's so many films yeah. to see i'm looking forward to it it's yeah. always a challenge i feel like when things are like that big and got all these different screens you're like yes you, you kind of feel bad for filmmakers like hey, yes. where do you go you 100 like, percent, yeah. yeah and it's like i had a screening of my short film good morning last year at their little sister festival the indie horror awards or something like that but that was their last year, and it was really fun, but they had two screens, and they did shorts all day in one screen and features all day in the other screen. Wow. And that was cool. Yeah. I, I stuck to the shorts thing because of community. Yeah. It's like I get to see all these extra films totally. and figure out about all these extra filmmakers and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. It was cool. 
Well, Lucas, you had a little uh, game or uh, questionnaire game. that you wanted to bring to the table. Cool. Every once in a while, we throw a game on the show. Love Lucas it. is usually pretty good about crafting some games. There was one episode where he uh, made me eat these terrible Oreos. Happy to tell you, there's no terrible. Was it a Christmas theme game too? That, uh, was it the Christmas one? I think it was the Christmas episode that where one, we tortured you with God, mayonnaise that one, Oreos. That <laughs> fucked me up, man. It was. You can hear me gag on it and everything. It was pretty That's bad. Funny. Yeah, Blake didn't get a single. Bag yeah, he got Oreo. all yeah, just the regular surreal. great Oreos. He even got the double stuffed Oreos. <laughs> I was, I was literally I was, waiting for. It. I was like, dude, I'm, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get poisoned. I got like sour wow. cream, you got mayonnaise, sour mayonnaise, cottage cheese. I was like, what the hell is going on here? Have you all seen those dirt cake Oreos that they just released? They're no. supposed to have uh-huh. like little mini gummy worms in them or something. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Okay, that yeah. sounds good. That's my style. Yeah. That's my style. I like this. Uh, lucky for you, there's no, uh, there's no, no gross cons- stuff. No gross stuff today <laughs> for you, man. So, uh, Lucas, what we got today? Okay, so since last week we were talking a lot about Fallout, I figured this would be a good time to test your apocalypse readiness knowledge. Oh gosh! All right. So, uh-huh. we already went over a couple things last week, but this is going to be. Just seeing how far along into this you'll get. I have six questions. Okay. So, if you get four out of them, you'll probably live. Okay. Uh, <laughs> any less, yeah, you're a goner. Yeah. Yeah, we brought up a brief apocalypse scenario, and I was like, I totally would piggyback off him because I'm not the survivalist kind of guy. He's, <laughs> this guy's prepared. I know you're like, Lucas is. will survive. I will stay with him. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, for question one, the bombs have just dropped. So you're starting to feel kind of sick. Turns out this is radiation poisoning. However, there is one chemical that you can use to treat radiation poisoning that is very abundant in most medical scenarios. What is this chemical? Oh, jeez. I'm not a science guy. Yeah. Rat away? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I'll give you a hint. It is used in every single surgery where they cut. Uh, Some type of antiseptic? And that, I was going to say antibiotic, but that doesn't make sense. I, I mean, like, it, it's a uh, hydroperoxide? No. I'll give you one more hint. I don't know. It is, it stains everything it touches brown. Bleach. No, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I just heard stains. Iodine. Iodine. Ah, yeah. that's it. There yeah. You okay, you're not dead yet. Good for you. Okay. I it's survived it's the not blast. Great. I'm, I'm slowly dying. Disease, long disease. <laughs> I'm slowly dying. <laughs> All right. So for this one, you're already several months into the apocalypse. You're at a Walmart. You look on the shelves, and you're trying to figure out which cans are good to eat still. There are two signs that you can look for to make sure that these cans are not expired, besides the expiration date. Um, if it's open of any sort, any cracks open? No. No? Not... <laughs> I mean, Technically, if it, yes. If it's exposed, open, I mean, you know. Uh, there are two signs that you can look for. If it's rusted. No. Okay. I'm, I have no idea. <laughs> no label. I'm going to say that you got it half right. Okay. So you look for either dents or punctures into the can. Yeah. Or you look for bloated tops because when the food inside starts to rot, it expands uh, and causes the okay. cans to bulge outward. So bloated tops or if it's dented, it's... Yeah. Yeah. So I'll say you're surviving like a week for now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Okay. So you've officially run out of cans. So you're out in the woods, you're hunting. There's a plentiful supply of stuff like squirrels and predator meat. However, this will not be able to sustain you for very long because of one reason. Why can these lean meats not carry you around for that long? They go bad easily. No. Fast, no. Uh, bacteria. No. <laughs> Specifically, yeah, these are lean meats. So they don't have a lot of... There's not enough fat to sustain you? There's not enough fat to sustain you for long periods of time. Aye, yeah. So while it'll keep you full, you'll eventually start being malnourished and it'll still kill you. Dang. Hmm. Okay. So the squirrel bits, they're just on Fallout. They're just little snacks. Though. Yeah, they're just snacks. It's like <laughs> eating popcorn chicken. You can yeah. eat it every now and then, yeah, but yeah. if you eat it too long, you're going to start losing stuff. Okay. All right. Heard. Well noted. All right. So in the apocalypse, one thing you're going to have to worry about is your dental maintenance. One of the things that attacks this is scurvy. What can you eat to prevent scurvy? If I 
vegetables. I'm gonna need you to be more specific. Um, how common in the kitchen is it? I'll give you a hint. Uh, as you get further south in the U.S., they become a lot more common. Bananas, oranges, because vitamin C rich f- fruits like citrus Damn. prevent scurvy. I'm all right. Yeah, I'm dying out here. Yeah, you're not doing too well right now. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, you're still at a week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Slowly losing time. All right, this is right after the bombs drop. You need to figure out a way to get across the U.S., but you need to know how long it'll take you to get there. However, gasoline will not last forever. How long do you have before gas expires to get to your location? Jesus. Eight months. 250 miles. <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting I because really I know. read a uh, apocalyptic survival book once and people were kind of saying like within a week all of the gas will just be gone from gas stations so i've never even really considered like how long it would last in its natural state so funny thing is gas lasts three to six months after it gets into your car Ah. so after that it'll start losing its gas mileage efficiency and at eight months it is basically useless (laughs) yeah well see Who's uh, who knows something now? Yeah, uh, yeah I, not you. Still, not me. No. Still. <laughs> so, is this the final question now? Final question. So, if I get this one right, I survive. This guy's oh. no. You've gotten three. Oh wait, I yeah, get, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's cool. doing all so right. Like yeah. I've, got, I've got a slight chance. He's, okay, this guy's doing all right. I'm not holding my breath. <laughs> like no. me and Blake can be left in the dust. Yeah, yeah. seriously, yeah. big time, <laughs> big time. When choosing your weapon, you want to go with something that has effective range. It has efficient carry weight for all of the ammunition you need, and you also need it to be cheap ammunition. What caliber would you want to carry as your official round? Nine millimeter. See, I don't know. I have Cali- told you this answer 50, before. 50 caliber. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 20, 22. 22. Because you can I'm, buy 500 rounds for like 30 bucks and then carry them. No 22. problem. 22. Okay. Okay. Okay, so you're dead. You're really dead. <laughs> I know. The ball Zero fell percent. on Blake. I got like the, I, I got the poison this time. <laughs> I feel I like got, I got, like, a barely am you, hanging you're, on. You're hanging health, on. Right? There's a thread. Yeah. There is a thread. No health. He, he, he's around for a couple seasons. And then yeah. He's <laughs> at some point. You have a spawn of a new show right here. I'm excited to see the Fallout show. I've, oh, I, man. It is so I've been so man. busy the last so week, I I'm haven't gotten f- to start it. I'm on the finale. I've okay, heard like, cool. best video game adaptation there is. Like, everyone yeah. seems nice. To be it's my favorite video game franchise. Oh, so is it? Yeah. Wow. Wow. You'll love it. Oh, I You'll love it. Like, three in New Vegas. Those mm-hmm. are, like, big games for me, oh, for so sure. You'll love it then. It hits all the right beats and everything that you're looking for out of that game. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And it's just, it's quirky. It's dark. It's like it just. It is the perfect adaptation of yeah. Fallout. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's so, so cool. I need to see it. I posted the clip of us talking about it on TikTok and YouTube, and then it blew up on YouTube. Got like seven thousand views, and like some nice. people start arguing about Fallout on there. I always love reading <laughs> the comments. Like one guy goes. It's obvious these guys don't play the games because they don't know what they're talking about. I was like, you're false, sir. (laughs) And we've all played it before. Yeah, yeah. I was playing New Vegas last night. (laughs) Yeah, I started replaying Fallout 4 because of the show. I was like, oh, man. Just because I was wanting to play 3 again, but uh, it wasn't available on the store, on the PlayStation Store, unless you had the subscription service. Yeah, I got got the Xbox, uh, whichever Xbox it was, because of the backwards compatibility to play 360 games. And so I've got like Fallout 3 and New Vegas on that one. One. Yeah, three uh, is the most amount of time I've ever spent playing a game. I think it was like one of those one of those times where I was like living at my mom's at the time when it came out, and um, like nine hours went by in my room, and I was like, "Oh God, I'm like, still playing this game." Yeah, I'm still playing. <laughs> yeah, I've never yeah. played one, but they are so fun to watch. Man, yeah, they are yeah. so entertaining. Like the world building is fantastic. <laughs> I remember being in choir when New Vegas came out, and my buddy next to me and I would both play New Vegas a lot. So sometimes. We would be like mimicking like we were singing the songs, but we would just be talking about <laughs> Fallout nice, to each nice, other. Nice. And like, I remember like in, like distinctively like I couldn't wait to get home oh, to keep yeah. playing. I was so <laughs> deep into so it. Into I'm just it. imagining you guys just in the back singing Big Iron as everybody yes. else. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 
Uh, another show uh, we we brought up on the last episode was uh, Breaking Bad. I'm rewatching okay. Breaking Bad right now. Ooh. So I think I saw the first three. Seasons. Oh, you ever finished oh, it? I, I haven't it's finished it. Ooh, yeah. It's Dude, so like when I three. watched it, it wasn't all out, and yeah. then I just like never finished wow. it. So I need to go you, back. You're the best episode yeah. to have you, man. I need yeah, to go back. Totally. I'm so thrilled. For Even you if you started over, like I think now watching it, you'd probably it will probably hit you a lot more. Okay. Because okay. Where's you at currently? I'm almost done with season two. Oh, yeah, right it's, it gets better. And it's like it just immediately from that show it starts like you know it, the shit just starts piling on dude and it's right. getting like, worse and worse as it goes it just get yeah it just becomes <laughs> that's the all worst that's style. Style. Yeah. Happen to the right. it feels like 10 tornadoes happened at the same yeah. time it's by the like you it's can't insane. do that stuff and it be chill yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what it's, I mean? like, it's got an intense like atmosphere all around it mm-hmm. i mean it's just and yeah, that's just increasingly watching over is maybe like the biggest influence for like filmmaking modern film it's making, definitely like, just it changed it tv like, it really yeah, changed yeah. everything man it, it's insane for me really yeah watching it as a director and writer now it, it like it hits a lot more for me because like I, I I think I told you but we we have a script that we're working on uh, the called the Judge and it's very much more like No Country for Old Men Blue Ruin Breaking style Brother. and like Breaking Bad kind of feels like in that kind of vein yeah. where it's just like it's subtle it's super dark kind of you know? crime drama yeah, family exactly. realism yeah. yeah exactly dude but yeah and that's the thing about Breaking Bad too I feel like. Yeah, it gets better as it goes, and also I just feel like it's just a plain old different than any other film there is, too, because it totally. kind of just has this like unique amount of time you can flesh out with characters, and yep. I feel like it's a perfect source for like influencing short films more than anything. There's just so okay. many like moments and scenarios that happen in between where it's just like yep. that's just an idea, that's an idea. This is yeah. a lot of the independent the scenes are really strong. It seriously gets the imagination, man, yep. in a very unique yeah. way. So I've been digging into The Great on Hulu, the time Ooh. period I've drama comedy. Okay, so it's L. Fanning and Nicholas Holt, and huh. it's about like Catherine the Great and her reign. But it is like an absurd comedy, and it is really wild. I've got a few episodes left in season three, and that's where they canceled the show. Oh, wow. But it's on uh, Hulu. It's like a Hulu original. Yeah, And the guy who wrote uh, the adaptation of Poor Things and The Favorite wrote and ran the show. Nice. So, yeah, Tony McNamara. And it's uh, really brilliantly written. That's awesome. Yeah, Yeah, that's awesome. I recommend it. Really love that guy's newest film, Poor Things. I still didn't see it. You saw Poor Things. It's original. Oh, you didn't? It's an original. It's a true original. Yep. Yeah, it kind of reminded me of like a bit of that like Guillermo del Toro type of perspective, but a uh-huh. little fantasy, but a little more like down to a little darker too. I, I just love Absolutely. how dark. I love how shamelessly dark the whole film and it is. Gets and gets very sad. Oh, very sad. Yeah, yeah almost a little bit of like Fra- a lot of Frankenstein influence. Even a hundred percent. There's a lot of gothic horror. And there was a huge on. influence of the film Metropolis. Yes, dude, yeah. I sensed that. Did you ah, see, there's Metropolis. this great side by side comparison that people have made of the shots next to I each other. It. You should check it out. I believe it. That's so cool. If I see it on social media again, I'll try to share it. Cool. Metropolis. What movie is that? Science fiction from like the ni- late 1920s by Fritz Long. He directed M, that murder oh, film. Yeah, dude, yeah. He's, I, I need to see Wave. Those are the only two of his I've seen, but dude, incredible German films. And it's, yeah, so I've not seen the first big sci fi. I need to. M I was M's pretty M, that's why freaking I fantastic. Yeah, I, it, believe I think it. I fits the most with your filmography so far. It's like basically just a serial killer film in 1931. Okay. It's like, it feels like it was made in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. It's so dark and that's so ahead of its time. Just it's incredible. It's, um, yeah, way ahead of its time. I mean, like, I, I was blown away by it. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of like ahead of its time like slasher films basically have any of you seen peeping tom before i love that film dude no. oh, it's how, so how, good oh man no, that's so one good. of the it came out the same year as psycho and i'm like dude that Some kind of just feels even more acting. visceral yeah, yeah yeah it really pulls Some you great in. acting and it's like a bit of like a horror scenario but it's so mm-hmm. subtle and slow paced that mm-hmm. like it kind of feels like it's just menacing kind of subtle quiet for the most part but then it's yep. like when those horrific moments happen it's very jarring and loud and it's still horrifying now like, and the moment that i love is when the blind lady's just like what are you watching? Whenever he's yeah. like rewatching the, f- like it's about this guy who has like an eight millimeter camera and he goes and kills people on yeah. camera. Yeah. And then wow. he goes home and he watches the tapes yep. and this blind lady doesn't know what he's watching. Oh, and it's like, yeah, it's really, it's a really it's wild the film. Stalker I've ever, creepy stalker I've ever seen. Yeah. It's in the 60s like, it came like, out? 1960. Wow. Like, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. Yeah. No, me too, dude. Honestly. Yeah. You're Such like, a good it's movie. Great those directors typically didn't do horror. They were kind of like, they remind me of a lot of Frank Capra, typically, who did, like, It's a yep. Wonderful Life. Like, yep. they were doing more stuff like that with, like, um, a lot of their films in the 40s and 50s. But, yeah, they mm-hmm. just went horror. I, mean, I think it was largely... Very bad. technically well-made, yeah. Such a, such a technical marvel, mm-hmm. dude. It was, it was controversial at the time for its subject matter. Because it's like, no one was... Being that straightforward about taboo subject matter, Psycho also came out that year, and I think that one kind of like broke the rules close enough for a wide audience. But yeah, people yeah. thought it was like overwhelming at the yeah, time, and it took years sure. to catch up. Yeah, I think if it. Psycho didn't exist, 
people would revere Peeping Tom in the way that Psycho Probably. is revered. You're right. Yeah. You're, you're absolutely right, man. Yeah, I think Psycho sort of like dominated it. But yeah, Overshadowed. Peeping Tom, but Peeping Tom is, I would say, yeah, just subtle. It's Both just, incredible films. Yeah. Nothing against Psycho. No. Amazing film. I love film. Psycho. Yeah. I love Psycho, too. So, yeah. But, but Peeping Tom just really deserves, yeah, deserves yeah. to be seen. Agreed. Yeah, it's important modern horror, I feel like. Yeah, I've never even totally. heard of that movie. I recommend it. I'll get yeah. yeah. a copy of that next time. Yeah. yeah. Check it out. Yeah, I, I I learned so much <laughs> between awesome, you guys man. because like I mean we we he, he always suggests different movies and stuff. I still have a whole stack upstairs of movies he's he left me borrow. But like I'll see, stream, man. I'll watch your letterbox stuff yeah. and you you know oh, your your you. posts like stacks of movies and things like that. And I'm like, what are I never even heard of these? I want to drop three movie recommendations. Okay, okay. Phantom of the Paradise. Oh, that's a great one. Brian, Brian De, Palma. De Palma. Dude, I've been wanting to get into this okay. stuff. So it's his take <laughs> on Phantom of the Opera, but it's like a 70s movie, feels like an 80s movie, set modern day at this like new rock club. And like it's got uh, the lead from Suspiria in it. The dude that did all of the music also acts in it and was like famous for being on Sesame Street. I think <laughs> it's like, like it's just, it's, it's a centric film. Thing. It's yeah. got like a centric atmosphere about yes, it. No, it's absolutely. cool. It's really original. Another that doesn't get enough love is the people under the stairs. I've seen that. Wes Craven. Yeah. It's, it's just, my favorite Wes Craven I movie. I've seen that when I was young, a lot yes. younger. I, I I don't really remember anything what, what, about it. Do you know like what era that was made? Was it like a nineties? Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I haven't seen like any of outside of Nightmare on Elm Street. You know, like, it could be early nineties, but oh. it's like it's funny and scary, has great message, and highly recommended. Oh, that sounds awesome. It's a very fun movie. It's my favorite movie to like show to people that have never seen it. And then another one that's a little more obscure is The Boys Next Door. I've heard of that. And it's like uh, a young um, Charlie Sheen. And he and his friend have just graduated high school, and they decide that they're going to go on this, like, crazy trip to L.A. and just kind of, like, live it up and go crazy a little bit before they come back to their hometown to work a factory job for the rest of their lives. And, like, it's an early Penelope Spheris movie, so it's before she did Wayne's World, but it's very dark. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, the closest thing that I've seen to, like, this feels like GTA. Like, okay. they go down there, and, like, his buddy wants to kill people, you know? And it's just, like, they get into some crazy shenanigans and do some messed up shit and get the cops called on them. And, yeah. like, highly recommended. Okay. Very low-key movie. Yeah, yeah. I haven't that heard, heard of that one I've never heard of yeah. that. Yeah. That's, that's what's up. Check it out. I right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love that, man. Nice, cool. nice. Well, thank you for the movie recommendation. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. I'm looking out. They're all uh, a a good fun time to watch. Yeah, yeah. I ha I honestly I've been slacking on the movie watches the last uh, few weeks here. I just between being busy and tired, I've just been really kind of watching shows just to kind of casually. Don't blame you. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah. So I was doing really good realms. there for a while. I was watching like movie after movie, being consistent about it, and then and I just kind of fell off or fell yeah, off the man. wagon. <laughs> I've uh, got. A list for AMC, so I'll go to like the movie theater a lot for oh, cheap, yeah. and it's nice. But it was funny last week. My girlfriend and I went and saw two movies, and I like surprised her with both of them. I was like, "Just be ready, we're gonna go see the movie." And the first one was Shrek Two. Oh, nice. that's the best one. <laughs> that's one of the series. And then the next day, we went and saw Selena. If you all have seen the Selena biopic, I, yeah, I did see that like, a long time ago. Yeah, Jennifer Lopez plays Selena, and it's about, about it. yeah. We it's, watched it in my high school Spanish class. Did that's same, really? Oh, really? It's literally two scenario. different times in the same teacher's Spanish class. That's um, seriously, seriously, same here. But <laughs> hi highly recommended. Beautiful film. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't remember music. much about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just uh, it's heartbreaking, and if you don't know the real life story, go in blind. Mm. Yeah, I've never. I don't know that. My Spanish teacher didn't show me that movie. She I should have left out. Uh, Damn. Yeah, so, Spanish I was shocked that she had, we actually went for that one. That, yeah, was, that was the best. That's choice. really cool. So right. there was another movie that I remember that they showed two times in my Spanish classes, and I cannot remember the title of it. And maybe you all do, but it was about a young boy who ends up crossing the border and he's trying to like find his way in America. And I remember very specifically there was this sequence that stood out where he goes to like. He's he pairs up with this guy and they're like trying to move through America and he starts working at this like fruit farm for a minute, like doing like uh, just like working for the farming community and they get raided by the government 
and like they get separated and it was just like really crazy and I just remember this movie being like really good but I cannot remember the name of it so oh man yeah, yeah. that yeah. doesn't ring any bells yeah. one it, of these days maybe somebody will leave a YouTube comment yeah, and let yeah. me know what that movie is so I can revisit it there's it was like an movie. intense Spanish class yeah. it was a very serious film brought me to tears like really good there was a movie like that where I watched as a kid, and I don't remember anything else about it. I just remember one scene, and I've always wanted to know the name of the movie, what it was, and everything. I just remember these these kids were in like in this auditorium or something like that. There's something going on on stage or whatever in front of this whole school, and the one kid gets up and yells, "Holy shit!" And everyone's like, like turns their head because we're like kids in yeah. the theater in this high school auditorium, and it's like this really kind of funny awkward moment where the whole classes everyone looks at them and and i just remember it being the funniest thing back in the day but i it's like it's like a weird hidden memory yeah. in my yep. brain i'm like wait what was that <laughs> like i don't even did i hallucinate that right. like i know that's it's so out there. funny yeah. yeah it's like there's things from being a kid that's like was that even real yep. yeah. that even really yeah. happened yep I remember like watching Blair Witch Project when I was a kid for the first time, and that Never scared forget. the shit out of me. But I remember I felt it felt like a fever dream watching that. You Dude, know? that's yeah, yeah. Like, I, cause I, I mean, I got nothing against Blair Witch Project. I watch it now though; it doesn't really do anything for me really. But yeah, like, same, but I just remember watching it as a kid and feeling like I was so scared to watch it and the reveal at the end of the movie yeah. and stuff like that. Well, Looking that back at that was, was new at the time. yeah, it felt like very traumatic. It feels like a yeah. fever dream. Well, and... Blair Witch worked because people thought it was real. Totally. Yeah. yeah. You know, very it's like, convincing the way it was yeah. told. Yeah. Their <laughs> marketing campaign was impeccable. Yeah. You know, and it's like, even like the questionable ethics of the filming of that movie, like the director went to that town like months prior and like met a bunch of people, told them what they were doing was like, you know, you all are in on this. Our actors aren't. And like, walk these actors around the woods for days making them think they were really lost in the woods like wow. all of their reactions are genuine because they were genuinely very very angry and it's like i couldn't do that to somebody yeah that's pretty <laughs> like, fucked up. that's pretty ballsy yeah, that's not okay yeah yeah that movie was actually my first exposure to horror movies oh Ooh, yeah really nice. yeah my mom showed it to me after the pumpkin patch when i was six. Oh Ooh, god that's not good no yeah. i was terrified <laughs> yeah Thanks, mom. <laughs> I feel like there's trauma. there's like some little kid whose like first movie was like uh, like skin a marink or something oh, like yeah. that, <laughs> and they're just like absolutely horrified Seriously, by it, you know. That. And it's like they're gonna grow up this and they're gonna is be what like, movies are right. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, this is not what most horror films are like. I never got to see that. That's one. a great one, dude. I love it. it. Yeah, I, it's always controversial. Really well. People are like, yeah, that, it is controversial. I, again, I respect your opinion. Didn't like it. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. I, I want to like see, I feel value. like I have an idea of why you would not, you know, like why I would lean with you and then maybe why I would lean with you as well. Yeah, but yeah. like, it's one of those things where I do, I just need to watch it, but it's yeah. It's a unique experience. Yeah. You've not seen, seen anything, anything like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Isn't it supposed to be like a very active watch whenever you're doing it? Like it can't have anything else going on. Um, the whole idea is that it's a very atmospheric thing, right. like almost like it, people have called it like horror ASMR basically. Uh, and it's like yeah. a lot about like being focused and like pulled into the world of it and like being afraid of it, like more conceptually and everything. So a lot of people will be like, yeah, like watch it in your bedroom alone in the dark, you mm -hmm. know, and like, you know, lose yourself to the movie. I don't do that with happy movies. <laughs> That's fair. I don't either. <laughs> uh, it just, Came on Shutter, which I need to just renew that subscription. But uh, Late Night with the Devil, I've been wanting to watch. Oh, that yeah. was a good one. I saw, you it. saw it. it. That was really good. Yeah. I saw it in theaters. Yeah, yeah. That I was did a good really one. enjoy it. It looks really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, liked it a lot. I liked seeing that actor in a lead role. I always forget his yes. name. Uh, yeah, David. Kind of, I don't know how to pronounce yeah. his name. He's a Dark Knight Prisoners. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. No. Great exactly. actor. Yeah. Yeah. Great actor. What did you say? David Dash Malchion. Yep. Is that it? Okay. There it is. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. That looks like what an interesting great premise and it's, it's, it's really and, fun it yeah, was good yeah. to see yeah i saw cool. in theaters it was it was worth it i thought it was really interesting in theaters recently they just put out immaculate and then within two weeks i think they put out the first omen and those those films are very similar has anybody gotten a chance to see both of them no. i haven't seen those but yeah. they're um they're both like films about nuns conceiving a mm, not normal kid mm -hmm. through the church uh being not what it seems right <laughs> and like there's so many like little similar things about both of them i just found it really funny that like movies that obscure would come out 
side to side right, in the theater yeah. like that. But I enjoyed both of them, and it was funny. Uh, I think I like Immaculate a little bit more, and I won a Immaculate Mylar sticker at uh, Up All Night the other night. Oh, cool. So I've just got this sticker that's like this big. That yeah, I put on like the back of my <laughs> car know. or something. <laughs> nice. You know, another movie, uh, another movie that's kind of been coming back to me that I want to revisit is uh, Rosemary's Baby. Man, that's one of the best ever. That, best that movie is another time. one that fucked me up watching. It, it. Is like horrifying. at the end, it's just like, oh, I see it. It's disturbing. It's disturbing. It's quite. I disturbing. started it with a friend. We watched like Holy half best. of it, and then we had to go do stuff together. I was very pulled in. Really enjoyed what I had seen, and just never finished. Oh, oh really? You, so, because I need it, to go back. I'll tell you yeah. what. The interesting thing about that film is it's particularly kind of comforting to watch it. I know there's like a lot of subtle pieces of horror all throughout, mm-hmm. but it's very. It's got a comfortable atmosphere for the most part, because yeah. it's kind of just a New York like city lifestyle in the late '60s getting captured. But dude, mm-hmm. it gets like to be one of the most disturbing things yeah. ever made. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like it, some of the comfort comes from that lead actress. It does. Me I think that she's like very. They were straight off a of meditation session with and, the Beatles. Yeah, yeah they were like literally on an interesting wavelength in that yep, time period. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, just that whole cast was interesting. Working with Blansky in that time, and I just had to be a very surreal time to be. Yep. Yeah. The, the place to be so I think it just has such a uniquely gothic atmosphere that's it's uniquely nightmare inducing man like watching totally. all that just really speaks to nightmares the first time I saw it I was up for like three days straight because it literally like has that kind of impact it's just yeah, like it yeah. made me think of all my worst like nightmares yeah. in a way that just it's, it's like scary but also just very thought provoking and even slightly darkly hilarious when I rewatch it too okay. like it's I, see, that's my favorite thing I love dark comedy and, and like films yeah. the most like I'll have to like, revisit that dark then. comedy okay. so, yeah, and yeah. it even it, has that to it it's worth the watch she let me borrow it back like when we first started hanging out I and, can yeah <laughs> And, uh, Don't more the no, <laughs> stack is too high, dude. Stack is too high. Um, yeah, there was already another one earlier that you were gonna bring to him. So yeah, Tom, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's right. Yep. I know, every time so we just like, have a counter in the corner of the screen, Blake's movies. That honestly, <laughs> somebody's need to keep track, man. And I I, the amount of times I've said on this podcast, like, oh yeah, I'm gonna watch that, and I never do. And I mean, like, dude, <laughs> I'm alive. Yeah, Dixie's plays. I mean, films are meant to, yeah. meant to be watched, and they're meant to be watched. Everyone's on their own walk. Yeah, it doesn't matter, man. Just do your yeah. thing, man. Totally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but. uh Right on, man. Well, uh, we're cutting, we're getting to the hour mark here, man. Uh, I'm glad that you got to come in, nice hang out, and, you, and whatnot. I know you guys. Uh, I feel like we could yeah, just keep going and going and going, and going with touch, the man. Yeah, conversations. Yeah. Um, what else uh, should you want people to know and talk about? Any, anything you want to plug or anything like that? Okay. Um, so I've got some new stuff coming out soon. Um, the fool will be out when this drops. So it's just like a one minute little micro short drama. Um, I've got, uh, some stuff in the works right now. I've got this project called Camp Laughter that I'm making like a short film proof of concept for a feature and it's like a satire of old 80s slasher films. And I've just been having a lot of like pre-pro art done lately and we're going to have a poster made up soon and start doing a crowdfunding campaign for that one. Um, and uh, I've got Split Blood coming out soon. We're doing the finishing touches on that. That's my friend DeAndre Teagle's short yep. film that he wrote and directed. He was on your show. He was. He's a very, very um, nice guy. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It was super great working on that with him. I produced the project. I was the first AD on set, and now I've been editing it, and it's off for score right now in vfx so it's very close i'm very proud of it he had never directed before so that was a really cool experience um otherwise let's see there's a film i believe the title is halloween house sitter it could change that's going to be coming out in october most likely um, that I play the killer in is a slasher film. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. And then um, there's another film called Night Harvest that I also play the killer in that's also going to be coming out around that Damn. same time, too. Um, so those are two cool fun. titles, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Night Harvest and Halloween House. I really Crazy. like the Night Harvest I, That's title a cool a title. Yeah, Damn, that's yeah, awesome. it was fun. So I play, like, a, a, a guy who was like a feral person living in the woods and uh, basically because of some crazy events I come back as like a like a jack-o'-lantern-y scarecrow type yeah. creature um, and uh, I raise some hell. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's what's up, man. So those were some fun shoots. Uh, I like acting when I get the opportunity. Mm-hmm. It's all, always a good time. Nice. But yeah, I can't think of anything else right off top right now. Um, yeah, uh, 
I'm sure there's going to be other stuff on the way. Okay, yeah. right on. Any hey, socials uh, for your films yeah, or anything so, like that? Yeah, uh, so on Instagram, it's just Dylan A. Young, so D-Y-L-A-N-A-Y-O-U-N-G. Um, on Facebook, I'm just on there as Dylan A. Young. On yeah. YouTube, it's Stolen Thunder Pictures. Um, Vimeo. Did you mentioned Letterboxd earlier? It's Stolen Thunder Pictures. Yeah, I'm on Letterboxd. I think it's just Dylan A. Young on Letterboxd, and it's like... If you find my Instagram, which I know is right, then you can find my link tree, <laughs> okay, and you can yeah. find everything. Wow, man. Praise be for the link tree, man. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I know, I, Big I, game changer. Yeah, dude. Like, I It didn't even register to me until like a year ago. I was like, oh, I just need to make a link tree. Like, oh, yeah. I got too many links here. I got too many socials and stuff. Puts everything yeah. right where you need it. Absolutely. Uh, well, man, it's a, it's a pleasure always hanging out with you, dude, talking with you, man, learning from you. I'm super proud of you, man. Like, ever since I – got wind of who you were and we started talking and hanging out and stuff like i just your, your stuff is just getting better and better I can't thank you, see you. Where you go, man. yeah thank it's you. incredible you, it. you've got a very exciting career ahead of you man i appreciate so, it and uh happy to uh to know you and be a part yeah. of anything so yeah. do y'all uh, have any questions about any of my stuff i know you had oh, you all watch kinda, some stuff yeah i watched it all if anything I, yeah. and i know i already asked you this for your first project but I get, in general like um do you have like i guess any particular directors you're really influenced by for your, so for your you know you obviously know. people will say that like i my stuff reminds them of Tarantino a lot. Mm-hmm. And there was a long period of my life where he was my favorite director. Yeah. I think recently I've learned leaned towards De Palma oh, a little man, bit, awesome. honestly. Um, incredible. But it's like I'm hugely influenced by Euro horror. Right. Uh, a lot of the old Italian horror film directors. Yeah, and right. yeah, it's like I'm, I'm yeah, big I mean, on like the Severin Films label. And I like watching all those old schlocky Italian horror films. And, you know, Spaghetti Westerns are a big influence on me. But I also like a lot of the new stuff coming up, like yeah. Ari Aster, mm-hmm. Robert Seriously. Eggers. Uh, sure, right there, yeah. Midsummer. Dude. Um, yep. And then uh, Alex the Garland's Civil War just came out. I can't wait to see that. I think he's a great filmmaker. Uh, yeah, like Rose Glass, Glass is doing some really cool stuff. If you haven't seen Love Lies Bleeding yet, uh, definitely check it out. I thought Saint Maud was also really cool. So, yeah, I, I try to consume a lot of media, and I think that, like, I learn a lot from bad movies. I like watching bad movies and I can be like, oh, you know, it's one thing if I turn on There Will Be Blood and I'm like, oh, this is masterful. Everything's perfect. But it's a little easier sometimes to like be watching something and be like, ooh, this doesn't work. Why doesn't this work? And then I can like learn from stuff like that a little bit easier. I find. Yeah. So I like watching bad movies. I like that. I like that. Like, like yeah. It's a good mentality. It's a really good mentality. Yeah. I like that. I mean, movies are pretty much like our textbooks, you know, yeah, to, yeah. 100%. as filmmakers. Yeah, so. yeah. watch the you know audio commentaries want, like, yeah. and watch the well, BTS. You know what you do want, but then it's like, what do you not want? Yeah, exactly. 100%. That's, like, that's a really good way of looking yeah, at it. Yeah, because it's like, I'm able to learn from my mistakes on set, but sometimes it's nice to learn from other people's mistakes yeah, on yeah, set, yeah, too. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah that's, ex- that's exactly the mentality I like about it. For it's sure. Like, and, that, and that's why I, I take a lot of time with mine, because it's like, I really want to kind of work out everything that's bad or could go wrong, everything anxious about it until I get there, then it's flawless when it's and, there. And as much as you do that, there's still stuff you can never be prepared for, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's so important. You, Preparation yeah. is so it's important. It's how you handle it, yeah. Yes, it's, 100%. It's how you navigate it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that's cool, man. And then lastly, I know we mentioned films of this year that are worth checking out. We've got Dune Part 2, but I thought I'd also throw in there Space Man. It's a new film released on Netflix starring Adam Sandler. Yeah, Have you that, seen that looked intriguing. It's I actually not pretty seen good. It yet. I loved it, dude. Yeah. It's a freaking incredible film. I mean, I love how Sandler's been on a roll with dramatic yeah. It's kind of yeah. like a more melancholy, more lighthearted than Uncut Gems is about. Okay. Like a, and Punch Drunk Love You. And, really, okay. But yeah, it's just kind of like a loner who's just kind of kind of finds his fulfillment out in space. And really I remember simple. there being another good yeah. name in that movie, too. I need to check that oh, out. Paul Mulligan and Paul yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, both of them are great. Oh, seriously, some of the best yeah. of our time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I really love that movie too. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty fantastic. Well, there was like a top five biggest influence of all time. So. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it's That's a great movie. Seriously, Paul Thomas Anderson Girl is my favorite director along with Scorsese. Don't blame you. Yeah. Oh, one more question for the table since uh, we're talking about uh, we dropped Tarantino. I saw that he abandoned the movie critic. Uh, yeah. On the new, yeah. So like, I know that was his tenth last movie that <laughs> he said he was going to do. Ever since he made, yeah. But. Uh, yeah, now what do y'all think about that? Because well, I, I don't know how much information was really even out there about the movie critic. A few things. But a few things, I thought. Yeah. I thought they was pretty heavy into it. Like, yeah. I think yeah, I think he wants to lean towards like theater work right now. Because I think after making Hollywood, he's been in a like, deeply melancholic mood throughout this decade. And I think okay. he's really not been finding like a fulfillment because he's so insecure about being the director who like makes a boring movie ever. Yeah. So I think, and, and it's like, honestly, I think guys like Scorsese can prove that theory wrong. So I, I yep. would like to think he could do it, but he really, he really won't do that to himself. Like he has to make one more final film and he, he cannot decide on what he wants to do. 
you. I'd like so. to see him just make movies when he wants to make I know, movies. I just, like, he's too casual. Just make fifteen if you want to. Like he, he he's got it, man. He's he's, he's got youthful energy for he has it for Absolutely. life. Absolutely. He, he he's born with it, man. Yeah, I think yeah. he doesn't believe it as much as the world does at this point. But it's common for him to go back and forth. Um, it, for years, I've like you know followed what what he's making next, and it's like, oh, Kill Bill three's next, no, mm-hmm. and then he'll make another movie, oh, Kill Bill three's next, no, you know, it's like he he changes yeah. stuff up a lot, so it doesn't shock me. Um, I'm interested to see where he goes with it. You know, it's like a lot a lot of people want him to make a horror film for his last movie, Which and so you know he's it's talked about wanting then. to make a horror film, so we'll see, but. I feel like he could run into budgetary limitations. I think it, you know, even being someone like Tarantino, it's tough to get the budgets you want. Yeah. Yep. Seriously. That's the way it goes. You know, it's like, same with like, well, that's the biggest struggle of the filmmaker. Yeah. Same with like Paul Thomas Anderson. Yeah. Cause it's like, typically like, I think he's finally worked his way around it. Cause he's got a new one called Prairie. He's working on right now. Cool. It's the biggest budget by far. It's a hundred cool. million dollars. It's like twice as much as Theory. I love so, that. Yeah. yeah. Really to see where that, how that's that one cool. Is. Especially his big epic, but his blockbuster too, starting to Caprio. So that's like, that's, everything about this just sounds like, whoa. I have not heard of this right. project, so that's really, really cool. It's, it's, yeah. This has been on, his, like, on, his, on some of his pages forums, and I just, I've just nice. been seeing some pictures about it. Dude, it looks, it's, it looks so interesting. That'll be yeah, cool. no plot released about it or anything. Okay. It, just, it just sounds incredible. I saw Scorsese's do it, uh, Frank Sinatra movie yep. with DiCaprio, yep. and I love Frank Sinatra. I love Sam. DiCaprio. So I'm like, that's perfect. Sounds like I a dream it. made in heaven, yeah, man. That's, that's awesome. Great. Yeah, there was some street performers yesterday at Rossini. Uh, they were doing My Way. Oh, nice. And it was a really cool like, cover nice. of it. Yeah. So cool, man. Right on. All right. Anything else, guys? Anybody? Wishlist Phantom Fury. There it is. There it is. I told you. Thank you. I, I was literally just thinking about this minute ago. John was like, so John uh, is one of the writers, and he's been working on Phantom Fury for a good while now, a video game coming out, and it uh, comes out to uh, when you guys are listening or watching today on, on Tuesday. So, so yeah. Okay. Congrats, John, and congrats, Phantom Fury team. So Wishlist Phantom Fury on Steam. It's going to be weird not having to say that anymore. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I come up with a new slogan. <laughs> well. Cool. Dylan, thanks again, man. It's Thank been a blast. Friday, I appreciate it. I can't Sad. wait to see you at FrankenCon coming yeah, up in a few for weeks. Sure. Looking forward to yeah. it. Uh, hopefully we can uh, keep working on some cool shit together, man. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Cool, dude. Sure. All right. Well, with that said, guys, see you next Until time. Until next time.